the valve is going to open up, send blood right onto the, the ventricle here, and uh, uh, along, along, along the, uh, the valve, there's going to be these little fibers called the cordy tendinae. Okay, these are little fibers that are connected to the, each cusp, and those are in return uh, attached to papillary muscles, which are hooked onto the wall of the heart, and those muscles are going to pull and, and allow the, the valve to open up actively. So pressure is going to passively open up the valve, and then actively these uh, cordy tendinae and the papillary muscles are going to actively open up the valve and allow blood to come on through. So when the pressure within the right ventricle increases more than the pressure into the right atrium, the valve is going to snap shut. Uh, when you hear sounds of the heart, this is not a sound. sound the sounds of the heart is actually from, from when blood hits the wall and then shoots up. Again, you need air to cause that splash. You know, when you smack your hand on water, you hear a splash. But when you do it underwater, you don't really hear anything. You just may hear a little swoosh. So the sound of the heart is not from the valve closing. Closing. Uh, remember that. Impress your friends. Uh, whatever. Okay. So now we know uh, when the valve opens up, it's going to close because the pressure in here is greater. It's going to push those push those cusps. Um, back backwards, and blood's not going to be allowed to come through nor go backwards. So now we're we're good. We're we're it's like quarantined from from the atria, all right. Um, and then the same thing is going to happen with this right here. There's another valve connecting the right ventricle and then the pulmonary trunk. So when the right ventricle contracts, it's going to push blood through this uh, this valve here, which is called the pulmonary semilunar valve. Pulmonary. Remember, we got that theme of pulmonary uh, arteries, pulmonary trunk, pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay, that's going to be composed of three three cusps again. Uh, uh, semilunar partial moon. They're shaped like little partial moons. Now these these this valve here, which you'll you, we'll also talk about with the uh, aortic semilunar uh, in just a bit. These don't have papillary muscles, so it's all passive action. There's there's no muscles attached to um, the semilunar valves. So it's all going to be passive opening and closing. So when the, the right, ventricle, right, right ventricle contracts, it's going to push blood through the valve. The valve is going to open up, allow uh, some of that juice to go through because pressure increased here, which is greater than it is in the trunk. And then as soon as the pressure within the trunk uh, ex exceeds the pressure within here, uh, by that time uh, the ventricle would be almost fully contracted. Uh, these these cusps here are shaped like cups, so blood is actually going to come backwards and then push the cups cusps together and close the valve, not allowing blood to go back through again. So again, we we've quarantined the blood from the 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 heart itself, and now it's within within here, and then we have that that blood pressure which is allowing for the rate of flow to go from the pulmonary trunk to the lungs. And then it's just, uh, just the, the pressure caused from here is going to allow uh, blood to come back to the heart. So that's, that's the pulmonary circulation. That's actually the, the flow of blood for the pulmonary circulation, right? So it's going to come in from one of those three uh, entrance veins, the coronary sinus, and then the vena cava, the superior and inferior, going to drain into the right atrium, then go through the tricuspid valve or the right atrioventricular valve to the right ventricle and then to the pulmonary semilunar valve and then it's going to go up to the pulmonary trunk and then the left and right uh, pulmonary arteries and to the lungs and then back to pulmonary veins. Okay, pulmonary veins, we're going to take the oxygenated blood to the, uh, the, uh, the left atrium and then here we have another atrioventricular valve. So this valve is also it has two other names. It all it's all referring to the same thing. People use them interchangeably. You have your uh, left atrioventricular valve. You also have your mitral valve and then the bicuspid valve. So if you remember, tricuspid three cusps, bicuspid two cusps. Same thing. These also are uh, this this here the bicuspid valve also has the cordy tendine and the papillary muscles. So those are going to actively pull uh, the valve open and uh, let it close as well. So blood's going to come through. Uh, remember, the, the, the pressure changes. 
The valve is going to close again and I come back through. Can't really see because the valve is behind the pulmonary trunk here. We have the aortic semilunar valve. It's going to be the same thing here uh, as, as the pulmonary semilunar valve, just as, as with the aorta. They, they don't have any papillary muscles, no chordae tendinae. They're, they're, they're muscleless and it's all passive movement, but they're cupped and uh, they, uh, they prevent backflow of blood. So th this is what's going to assure one directional blood flow, okay? So it's going to come through and then you get to your aorta and, uh, and maybe in a different lesson we'll talk about uh, the difference between the arteries and the veins and their shapes and thickness, wall thickness and, and stuff like that, but we'll do that later. Okay, so get through, gonna travel around that about. Uh, okay, so bicuspid valve and uh, aortic semilunar valve. Remember those, that's your four, four hearts. Uh, tricuspid valve, pulmonary semilunar valve. Uh, okay, let's get into uh, cardiac conduction system. All right, the the the, the heart has its own uh, um, own way of generating action potentials and allowing the heart to contract on its own. It's its own generator, so to speak. So if if you know um, if you've taken a, a phys class or some other class talked about action potentials, you're good. An action potential, if you don't know, is basically just like an electrical pulse, and those are going to shoot at some frequency. And uh, they're gonna they're gonna cause muscles to contract, and in this case we have cardiac muscle cell. Um, can you see that? Okay, we have two different two dots here. Um, here we have the sinoatrial node, or abbreviated the SA node. The SA node is going to generate action potentials spontaneously in rhythm. Uh, these these are actually they're, they're, they're cardiac muscle cells, but a little bit modified so it's nothing like it's a it's a magical box or something like that enigma box no it's it's a uh, uh, modified cardiac muscle cells so there's going to be a connection between the left atria and then the SA node and uh, when when this generates action potentials the action potential is going to travel along here along unmyelinated action potentials I mean it has continued continuous conduction Okay, so if if you know myelation of an ac of of an axon, uh, they're, they're, they're not they're not axons. They're not like uh, part of um, the general nervous system, so to speak. But they're um, they, they 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 work pretty much in the same way. Um, the myelin is just going to speed up and cause saltatory conduction. It's going to cause um, more of a pulse of action potentials than the continuous conduction is here. Uh, here we have continuous. So action potential is going to be generated, travel to this side of the atria, which is going to allow the atria to contract, and action potentials are also going to move to the AV node, which is uh, the atrioventricular node, which is going to delay the, uh, the, the, the uh, propagation of action potentials. Now, that is important because we want all of the blood in the atria to get into the ventricle before we have the ventricle contract. So if we have these super fast myelinated um, at, at, uh, action potential gen or, uh, propagation, we could have the whole heart contracting at this, pretty much the same time, and that's going to be very inefficient. We need some sort of delay from top to bottom, and that's exactly what the heart has. Evolution has miraculously provided us with the coolest tool for... Um, for providing our, our cells with oxygen and nutrients that we need in order to continue survival. Okay, so from the AV node, um